Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Dan Tanner. Hi, thanks for. Oh, sorry. Hi, thanks for being here. Normally, you know, I, I play something, or I play something with Jack, or I sing something, or I sing something with Jack. But uh, tonight, I, I'm still trying to get over a splitting headache. So what I'm going to do is tell you how you can make a lot of money. And I'm not going to ask for any of your money, and I'm not going to ask you to invest anything. And I won't even ask you for any of it that you make, although it would be nice if you did. Could you imagine how much I'd be worth if I had all the royalties from automobile air conditioning? You know, my father was working on drawings, and he would stay late at his desk because his house was real small. And he invented the kind of automobile air conditioning. He, during World War II, he installed air conditioning in sonar rooms of submarines, so he was somewhat experienced. He died suddenly very young, and the carrier air conditioning company said that everything that was in his desk belonged to them. Okay. So I'm going to tell you this now, it's going to belong to you, and this is how you're going to make a lot of money. And it has to do with the fact that technology is lousy, and technology lets companies cheat. Put up your hand if you remember when you went from dial tone, uh, rotary dial phones to touch tone. Remember that? And do you remember the phone company charged you more to have a touch tone phone? Oh, yeah. Remember that? Now, the fact is, it cost the company less to manufacture the phone. And when people use that phone, it saved the company money because the crossbar switches that they use in telephone exchanges worked a lot more quickly, you could get many, many more lines on the same switch and so on, but they charged you more because you thought it was cool. In the same way with automobile dashboards, when they first came out with dashboards that had digital displays, they charged you more for them because they look cool. It cost the company less to make them because they didn't have to put all those analog to digital converters into the dashboard or with those little motors to run analog things, like a little motor to turn your odometer over and to make your speedometer needle move, and all those gauge motors. They have to do that. Cost them less. Okay? Now, put up your hand if you remember the phenomenon of about 10 years ago, unlocking cell phones. Remember unlocking cell phones? It's the same thing. The companies tied the cell phone that you had to buy to a service. No reason. They just did that with firmware. So that you had to pay more or buy a new phone or something like that, right? And then the cottage industries uh, sprang up on unlocking cell phones. You could send your cell phone away, pay a little amount, your cell phone would be unlocked, and now you could use your cell phone on, on other carriers. The same thing has happened to American farmers. They really got shafted when John Deere put all the tractor features and tractor maintenance into a computer on the tractor. Some of you, and you're nodding your head, you've read about this on the internet. There are a whole bunch of companies operating, you know, now in, around the world you can access on the internet who will unlock your John Deere tractor for you so you can spend a lot less to maintain it so the poor farmer doesn't get shafted. Well, my car's like that. In 2021, we bought a new Subaru, Subaru Legacy. We bought it because we wanted all the safety features, the new safety features that it offered, and they're great, okay? But the car is less safe to drive at the end of the day because you've got this touch, tone, touch screen, a huge touch screen, and the only buttons you can see on the dashboard anymore that you can feel without looking at the screen or for the front and rear defroster. If you want to do anything else with your car, you have to navigate a touch screen. Now, is that safe? You've got to take your eyes off the road to navigate the touch screen. As a matter of fact, it's so unsafe to navigate a screen that this state has a law that makes it illegal for you to text while you're driving. You can make phone calls while you're driving because you can keep your eyes on the road, but you can't text when you're driving because you've got to look at your phone, right? So it shouldn't be that way. But I get the third from the top model of Subaru Legacies. And, and they're pretty similar to the bottom three. And the, the jump to the top one is $15,000 more. Now for that, you can get leather seats, that's still an option.
but it comes with a moon roof, which I didn't want. It comes with a steering wheel heater. It comes with a heated back seat. We don't even need to use the back seat. All this kind of stuff, right? Those are, those are options, okay? But what runs those options? The computer in your car. So if you pay that extra $15,000 when you get in your car, it recognizes your key fob. It adjusts your steering wheel. It adjusts your mirrors. It adjusts your seat. It adjusts your climate control. It adjusts just about everything you can think of, right? That relates to you. But my car, $15,000 less, doesn't do any of that. I have to get in my car and then select the profile that I have. And then the only doggone thing it'll do for me is select my radio stations. Mm -hmm. The car is a rolling entertainment center. It's not a, it's not a vehicle. It's a dangerous rolling entertainment center if you try to use the vehicle controls while you're in it. My friend who's bought, you paid more for it, for his car, he can say, heat 72. He can say, driver window down. Okay, he can do, and the car will do it. Okay? My car, my car won't. My car lets me change the Sirius XM stations. Oh, and by the way, if, you ever, if you're paying $20 a month for Sirius XM, the, the, the normal charge, call them up and tell them you won't pay more than $5 a month. They will accept that every time. Okay. So anyhow, here's my, here's my opportunity for making money. Find some good firmware coders who can hack into Subaru and Toyota and Honda and all those but they're all doing the same thing, right? and unlock car computers. I mean, I wouldn't pay $15,000 more for a lot of those features, but I'd sure pay $1,000 more to save $14,000 to get them, right? So you could unlock, you know, and once you do it, that's the wonderful thing about software, the really, really, really wonderful thing about software, if you do it once, all your sunk costs have been met. All you have to do after that is distribute it. Okay? Well, that's what I've got to say. Unlock cars, just like someone's unlocked the uh, John Deere tractors. How many people want to see that? Good. Yeah, you'd do that? Would you, would you pay a, a fraction, 7% you know, of the cost of the upgrade to get it done in your software? Yeah, sure you would. Okay, thank you very much and good night.